Welcome to the VR Expert Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Coles, Marketing Manager for VR Expert. And in this podcast, we will be sitting down with innovators, experts, and creators transforming the XR world. In today's episode, I'm delighted to be joined by Rama Urung. Uruganti, not long after the official announcement of the Railway Navigator 500. He's a high-performing leader with a proven track record over 17 years in Fortune 100 such as HP, John Deere and Intel, as well as startups and turnarounds. As of 2021, he acts as Chief Product Officer for Railway and has been given the task of defining and driving the execution of the company's global product strategy and roadmap. Railway, as a company, is focused on providing industrial strength, assisted reality, wearable solutions to engage, empower, and elevate the modern industrial worker to be more efficient and perform work tasks more safely with precision. Railway's assisted reality tools enable frontline workers to view and share documents, diagrams, photos, and videos, all while keeping their hands and field of view free for the work and much more, which we'll get into shortly with Rama. So first of all, Rama, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, as we ask all of our guests, I'd love to start talking about how you got into the technology. Ah, into Navigator 500 specifically. Yeah. Okay, sure. HMT1, if, uh, if your um, viewers knew about this, is our first headset. Uh, has been around for a few years now, and it has been the gold standard for industrial XR since its launch. And as these uh, units got deployed, we have about 5,000 client-side deployments. We've been actively listening for the past couple of years for customer feedback and looking for ways to make our future devices even better. We heard themes like lighter weight, that people want more lighter weight, people want more powerful, additional camera options, display options, and so on. So we, we thought about this quite, quite deeply, and we've had many, many years of experience in this space. And there's been, as you can see in the market, there's a lot of noise with multiple form factors. But we strongly believe in the form factor of HMT1. And so we continue to develop on top of that. There have been many years of human factors research that went into it. So we looked at it and we thought about where do we want to go from here? So we 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 took that technology and then built upon on top of it. And I can get into more specifics about Navigator 500, but the main thinking was we have this human factors research done and we are very confident that, uh, this, uh, that a unit that is not taking your line of, uh, line of sight that is slightly below your line of sight, uh, below your field of view, that's hands-free, is still the right form factor for industrial frontline workers who have been our focus. Interesting. So so you say you did all this research. What was the tipping point that brought you guys on to developing the Navigator 500? As you said, the HMT1 was highly successful. What made yes. you decide to bring it out now? Sure. Technology keeps moving, right? So what, one of the things that we wanted to make sure was People who have deployed these devices are at the forefront of the best technology there is. And camera technology is improving, for example, and display technologies are improving. The processor technologies are improving. So we wanted to make sure we have a, a, enough of a cycle. The, the HMT1 has been around for uh, four plus years. So it is uh, enough of a life cycle that we get onto the next platform. So that was one of the thinking around, let's get something out now, which is much better than HMT1 uh, in improvement, and then also is modular and more about uh, future-proofing the platform. So I can get into those things if you would like, but the main thing was the, it, it has enough time has elapsed, we have learned enough things, and we have made uh, enough engineering progress to come out with something dramatically better that customers can see value right away. So is it is it fair in saying then that the focus of the Navigator 500 isn't different to the HMT1? It's more of a next generation version of the device? You could look at it that way, yes. Uh, we are laser focused on the same customer and similar use cases. The customer is industrial frontline worker. That has been our customer since day one, since the company was founded. And that is the focus of Railway Navigator 500 as well. But we have made everything better. It is lighter weight, it has a better processor, it has better memory, it's dramatically improved camera, both low lights, telephoto modes. It has an improved display. It's better noise cancellation. I can yeah. keep going on and we can get into more of those if you would like. Now, on top of it, we have added modularity. But the focus is still industrial frontline workers. How do we solve their day-to-day -day problems? How do we make it easier for them to access the information they need, the help that they need, when they need it, where they need it? Okay. So continuing on that, so as you said, you can elaborate on some of those points. What was then some of the challenges that occurred while you were developing developing the new device? Sure. As you think about uh, what the customer feedback was, right? The people want ruggedness. That is a, 
uh, non-negotiable for all our customers. And that is a um, non-negotiable for us as well. Uh, so ruggedness was one thing that we had to continue to do. But people also wanted lightweight. They also wanted modularity, which is so that they could change cameras, they could change displays, they could make the platform more uh, more of a longer term investment without worrying about the camera might get too old or the display technologies might improve and they cannot upgrade. So ruggedness, modularity, and lightweight. These were the three things that at a high level we wanted to make sure our new platform had. As you think about it, you can usually get two out of the three, but not all three. You can get lightweight, but it is harder to make it rugged. You can get rugged, but it's harder to make it modular. You can make it light and modular, but you cannot make it rugged. So yeah, there's an inherent tension between these three things. Uh, that was one of the challenges. It, it has been an engineering feat from our engineers who have lots of experience in this field and who have worked ceaselessly on it for multiple years. We were able to get lightweight, modular, and rugged all, all in one device. That was the challenge. And uh, that's really a testament to our engineering team and how they've been able to achieve it. So that was the biggest challenge, making sure all three of these things are in this device. And we're very proud of it. Interesting. And uh, of course, we've ha- we've had other guests on who have said, who promised they would have no issue with delivery. Are you guys able to supply the Navigator 500 in large quantities without chip issues at the moment? No, uh, uh, when I say no, I mean, there are no chip issues. We are uh, absolutely able to deliver in large quantities. So chips, we have had a very close relationship with our suppliers, uh, primarily Qualcomm, and we have secured uh, more than enough chips uh, for the foreseeable future or all the way until the end of the year. So we, we've ha- had no issues with uh, chips per se, and the product is already out. That's fantastic. And uh, I think that's very important to mention for people trying to scale up. So as you also mentioned, Rama, there's still the HMT1 in your product line. How does the Navigator 500 actually complement your current lineup of products with the HMT1 Z1, the ATEX version, the HMT1, and the Navigator 500? Sure. We primarily had two lineups, right? One was intrinsically safe. Uh, you mentioned HMT1 Z1. Uh, that falls into that. Certified for zone one, more of an explosive environment, oil and gas, chemicals, those kind of things. That product continues on, and that's going to be the product uh, right now for for intrinsically safe throughout this year. The other product is HMT1. The Navigator 500 sits right next to the HMT1. It is a step up from HMT1. Uh, HMT1 price has dropped. The MSRP has dropped to make room for the Navigator 500. But they are both uh, currently sitting together. And there are customers who prefer the older one. But in, in some cases, it's because they've already had some deployment in place and they want to keep rolling out the same devices and so on. So we continue to support both. Uh, HMT1 is sitting right next to the Navigator 500. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Then um, going back to the Navigator, because this is the product people really want to hear about. Where do you think the new modular design, for example, or the lightweight thing is going to provide the most return on investment for companies using it in the future? Yeah, the main value proposition of Railware uh, for HMT1 that existed, which is being being able to, to make your frontline workers more productive, it just got better. The new device is faster. It has improved hardware, software. It has a better cloud offering in the form of Foresight. Now, let, let's just get into a little bit more specifics here. So it was faster chipset, better camera. We have Android 11 support and continued strength in the app ecosystem, right? The modular device makes the device with the overall thing from a product into a platform. It becomes more of a future-proof platform. So your investment dollars go a longer way. So you don't have to either keep using something that is maybe three, four years old, three, four years from now, or have to make the choice of adding one more set of new, brand new investments. So this way, because you can make the camera and the display as separate things and and upgrade them as needed, it makes your investment go, your investment dollars go a much longer way. We also made the Realware Cloud uh, revamp from ground up. It gives a modern, scalable portal to deploy the devices, which always Foresight was able to do, but now we are able to manage, get analytics, do troubleshooting of the devices much better with the Foresight. So that also improves the ROI because you are now able to see the ROI on our platform as well. Fantastic. And continuing, you just briefly mentioned the ecosystem. So you rebuilt the Realware Cloud from the ground up. You guys are also one of the strong points about Realware as its platform is the amount of software partners you have and software solutions. Uh, can you elaborate more on your push and how it's going to continue to grow and, and expand in the coming years? 
On the software platform, yes. So with, there are a few things we are doing on the software platform. One is we moved to Android 11 with Navigator 500, and it'll keep keep going on along uh, all the way to Android 14. So we have a lot of uh, runway ahead of us in terms of the software layer itself. Then on the platform itself, we've added some utility applications, things like uh, simple things like calculator, pedometer, and so on to make the device more useful. We'll also have a phone dialer coming out in the future. So these are things that make the platform itself more uh, useful. Then on top of that, third-party apps, right? Third-party apps are what really make the full stack solution. On the third-party apps, we are working very closely with a number of partners, as you know, uh, including yourself, to to get uh, much better full stack solution. So our thinking, uh, just to reiterate this, if I hadn't said it before, is we think of our solution not as just here's a piece of hardware, we think of it as a full stack. We start from on the hardware side, we'll have more accessories and modules. For example, on the software side, uh, I talked about Android 11, we have improved the UX, we've improved how you can enter data, we have an improved keyboard, we have uh, the companion app, for example, which makes it easier to uh, easily enter uh, data if, if you if you're using login and password kind of environment, we also expect to add more utility apps and then third party apps uh, we, we touched upon. So there's a whole full stack that needs to happen for a frontline worker to really enjoy the capabilities of the hardware. Very interesting. And uh, just to confirm all of the current software providers, so uh, Zoom will still all remain on uh, the Navigator 500, correct? Exactly. We we worked with all our partners to make sure that they, uh, they're they um, all working just fine and even better on Navigator 500 okay. because we have new capabilities in the in the device and all our partners are migrating to make use of all of these capabilities. And uh, sorry to keep on going back to the modular nature because I think that's very interesting how you future proofing the product, the hardware, as well as building the ecosystem, the apps, so it becomes more of a platform. I saw that you also signed with Coppin Displays. Uh, was there a reason that you went for them, or how was the how was the partnership with their new displays, their Pearl displays, been so far? Yeah, uh, Copin has been a very important partner with us from the very beginning. Actually, one of our co-founders uh, came from Copin. Uh, he used to work at Copin, and then from there he came, came and founded Realware. So that we have a very long history with Copin. And they've been uh, very close partners. We've worked closely together on the current display, and we are also working on what future potential displays might be with them. So it's been a, it's been a fantastic relationship. And keeping on going with about the future of Realware, what are your plans to keep on building this product and this platform out for the coming years? What are some things customers can expect, and what are some things they uh, can look forward to? Sure. The way to think about the future is uh, think along the lines of um, hardware uh, and software and cloud as three distinct things, but the three distinct things come together in the form of a solution. On the hardware side, we'll uh, obviously continue to innovate. Uh, we strongly believe in the form factor we have today, and we'll continue to make improvements along that direction, make, keep making new modules that are useful to solve real world problems for frontline workers. So uh, if, if you think about uh, one word for the way we think about new products is pragmatic. We think about things that are actually gonna be useful today rather than going after the latest buzzword. So we are always going after what is useful right now. So we, we'll think about those along those lines on the hardware side. Uh, I touched upon a few modules. We'll have, um, as you can imagine, camera is modular. So we'll have a couple of more camera modules coming throughout the year, which will be which will enhance the value of, of the platform that people invest in today. On the software side, we'll continue to make the user experience better, uh, making it easier and easier to personalize the device. For example, that's one uh, vector we are going along so that when you pick up the device, it's a lot more of your device rather than just a general purpose device that then you have to configure through multiple steps. For example, we have a fingerprint sensor already in on this device that can enable some of those things in the future. And then on the cloud side, we are doing a number of things to, again, make personalization better and also the device management, firmware management, uh, much more um, easy and intuitive for IT admins. Very, uh, very nice and very good to hear, especially as a value-added reseller for you guys. These are things that I think a lot of clients will and uh, big companies will really gain a lot from and uh, really reap the rewards from, which is really what we want as a B2B reseller. Now talking specifically about 
the app ecosystem. You talked about mobile device management and the analytics. Is this also going to be built out with that? Yes. So we have something called Foresight, as you uh, probably already know. Foresight is not exactly a full-blown MDM, right? That's not the intention of it. It is more like an EMM light. It is meant for to sit next to other EMMs or MDMs that you might be using. But by itself, it can also do a better job of going deeper into the device and helping you configure more deeply. And we have made improvements on that. So uh, the way we are thinking about Foresight is instead of just being an EMM light, we'll build the metrics and analytics into that, the firmware management into that. So it'll all be the same portal. It'll just have a lot more capability. It already has some now. It'll keep adding more throughout the year. Oh, fantastic. Well, Rama, I really would like to thank you for your time. You really have uh, made a big difference. For our listeners, where can they find you in the future or where can they best reach Realware and yourself? Sure. Uh, Realware is at R-E-A-L-W-E-A-R, realware.com. Uh, I can be reached. Uh, you can search for me on uh, LinkedIn, um, R-A-M-A, last name, Uruganti, O-R-U-G-A-N-T-I, and reach me directly. And of course, uh, through realware.com, you can reach customer support and whoever else directly from there. Perfect. Well, from all the listeners myself, thank you very much for your time, Rama. It was a pleasure. And for all who want to know more, you can find the links to Real Way and Rama in the show notes. And finally, if you enjoyed the show, please make sure to leave a rating on Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark.